Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you three things that everyone should have in their saxophone case and how to use them. Each one of these things will make playing the saxophone more enjoyable, easier, and it's gonna save you money. Who doesn't want that? Hey, GA Metcalf here with another Better Sax video. If you're a sax player and you're not using these three things, you probably should start. If you're a teacher, please share this video with your saxophone students. Okay, item number one, and the most important, is a reed case. You don't want your reeds to dry out. You don't want your reeds to warp and you don't want your reeds to get broken. So one of these takes care of all that stuff. You gotta take off your reed after every playing session and put it away in one of these. If you don't, it's gonna be no good after you've left it on the mouthpiece and it dries out. This one is my favorite and I'll tell you why. I used to play these other ones. This one I used to have. This one here, I had this one for, I've had this one since I was a kid. But now I've upgraded. I found this one. This one is made by Van Doren. And what I like about it is you can put different size reeds in one of these. So this one is for alto and soprano and clarinet, for example. And it's got this little sponge thing that keeps the moisture in the case. This is the only reed case I've ever had where my reeds don't get all nasty and moldy after a while. Reeds are really expensive, and when you've got a good one, you wanna get as much use out of it as possible. This will prolong the life of your reeds and make them play better, making you a happier saxophone player. Okay, item number two is this swab. I should say swabs plural because I use two and I recommend you use two as well. When you blow into the saxophone, the hot air from your breath creates condensation on the inside of the horn. You know, it's not really spit, but it does contain, you know, little bits of whatever you ate earlier or whatever you drank that day. If you don't clean it out of your saxophone, it's gonna leave a residue. And over time, that residue builds up and becomes like this nasty kind of dried on sludge. It can make your pads deteriorate, which means leaks, means your horn's not playing as well. It means more trips to the repairman to get the pads replaced, costing you money, all bad things that can be avoided by simply swabbing out your saxophone. Now, the closer to your mouth, the more of this residue you're gonna have, it's especially I'm talking about the neck and the mouthpiece. It's especially important to get one specifically to swab those parts of your horn out. When I'm done playing, I take off the mouthpiece and pass the swab through it a couple of times. Then I wipe off the exterior. Next, I pull the swab through the neck a couple of times and wipe the neck tenon clean. You don't want any dirt on this. Finally, I pull the body swab through the horn a few times till it's completely dry. It can take a little while to get the hang of this movement. And as a result, my saxophones work better. They don't get smelly and gross. And that makes me a happy saxophone player, saving me money in maintenance over time. I use these swabs by BG. I've tried basically all the other ones that are out there and these are the best. When you see the price, you'll be like, whoa, that's a little expensive for like a, a saxophone swab. Believe me, it's, it's worth it. I've had this one for over 10 years. I pull it through my saxophone three times a day, at least over that time. And it's still like the day I bought it. It's really well made. It's really durable and it will last you probably for the rest of your life. Again, a very solid investment. This one is for alto saxophone. It won't work well in a tenor because it's smaller and it won't really get all of the moisture from the wide part of the tenor saxophone. This one, this alto neck and mouthpiece swab, this can, you can use this on both tenor and alto. But for the body swab, you definitely wanna have, if you have an alto, get the alto one. If you have a tenor, get the tenor. If you have both, get both. 
these things are going to pay for themselves many times over by saving you maintenance on your saxophone, keeping your saxophone in better working order. Your pads are going to last longer. Your saxophone is going to need fewer adjustments. It's going to be cleaner. And another added bonus, it's going to help your horn keep its resale value because it's not going to become all nasty and funky. Okay, this last thing I've had for a couple of years, and it has completely transformed my relationship with reeds. It is called the Reed Geek, and yeah, it's just a hunk of metal. Before I bought this, I had the same problems as every other saxophone player with reeds. You get a box of 10 reeds, you get two or three out of the box that work well, and the rest of them are useless. You throw them away. You know, these reeds cost three, four dollars a pop, reeds used to feel inconsistent from one to the next in the same box. And I'd say, how can they be making these things? How are they so different from one to the next? Using this tool for literally a few seconds a day has changed all that. Now, when I go through a box of reeds, I can use pretty much all of them. And I don't, I'm not spending hours with this thing. I'm spending seconds each day scraping the table, the bottom part of the reed to make it flat to make a perfect seal with the mouthpiece. And that's it. Here's a power tip for you guys. When you get your reeds, you wanna get them on the hard side. When you take the reed out of the box and it plays really, really well, that probably means it's a little bit too soft. You wanna break your reeds in a little bit at first. They're going to soften up a little bit. And then you want this nice, nice long period of a week or more where you can get that reed in the sweet spot of resistance. If your reeds are too soft right out of the box, they're not gonna last very long. When you buy your reeds on the hard side, some of the reeds in the box are going to be too hard, no problem. You can get them down to where you want the resistance to be with this reed geek. You just scrape a little bit off. I remember when I was trying to learn how to do this, I was watching the videos on uh, The way I learned how to scrape these reeds is by doing a bunch of reeds, scraping off a tiny little bit here and there, testing it, going back, making some more adjustments. Every little bit of material you, you take off here makes a noticeable difference in how the reed plays. But once you've gone through several reeds like this, now when I get a reed that's too hard, I know exactly where to, where to scrape. It takes me a minute and then the reed is fantastic. Now, I'm not one of those guys that carries around a laboratory of stuff for my reeds. I don't carry around moldy jars of water with, with green reeds in them. I don't have time for all that. I want to take my reed out of the reed case, slap it on a mouthpiece, and start playing. And I want it to work, and, and I want it to last for a long time. I want everything. So with a good reed case and this reed geek, it's like my dream come true. I take a reed out. Every time before I play on a reed, I flatten the table with this. Every time. I, maybe, I spend maybe 10 seconds. I go like this, and then I put it on the saxophone, and I start playing, and I'm a happy saxophone player. I've, I've had reeds that I've scraped every day for a month or probably longer like this, flattening that table before every playing session. I've never run out of material to scrape off the bottom of one of these. You can go for it, don't worry. Get it flat. Now this thing is pretty expensive for a hunk of metal. I hesitated before buying one uh, because I thought the price was kinda too high. I can say now, I've been using this every day for two years and it has changed my life. It's paid for itself several times in that period of time you can be sure this thing is gonna last a lifetime. I've been using it every day for the last two years and it's as sharp today as the day I bought it. I've taken it on the plane, in my case, in the cabin, many times, never a problem with security. And this has become an absolutely essential part of my gear. My entire saxophone playing world kind of revolves around this stupid little piece of metal. Now, in case you're wondering, I have absolutely no affiliation with any of the makers of the products I'm recommending to you. I've bought them all with my own money and I've been using them for a very long time. If you purchase any of these things using the links in the description below, Amazon will give me a small commission, which I will then immediately spend on more saxophone stuff to review for you. 
If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed. Share this video with any saxophone player you may know who wants to sound better and save some money. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.